I'm Joanna Hall, the Walk Active Coach and creator and founder of Walk Active. And in this video, I'm going to share with you three big no-nos when it comes to increasing the effectiveness of your walk, specifically for fitness, for increasing your cardiovascular stamina. And this is important if you're using walking to look off weight, walk into better shape, and to improve your cardiovascular fitness. So here are three no-nos. I'm going to give you a little bit of a makeover so you can put those tips easily into place to make over your walking, to make it look better and feel better and actually get greater results. So you can so walk yourself fit and walk yourself into better shape for your mind and your body and your spirit. So first big no-no number one relates to your abdominals. Please do not do this. Pull your abdominals in really tight to the base of your spine, belly button in, because as soon as you start to do that, you will actually create tension in the lower spine, the glutes will contract. So whilst that may feel like, yep, I'm using my abdominals, I'm flattening them and I'm clenching my bottom, I'm getting more toning effect, what happens is that you automatically create a whole misalignment through your body. You're going to put compression here in the lower spine, which can exacerbate lower back discomfort and also incorrect tracking from the foot and um, coming up into the hip. And also it's going to stimulate and encourage you to walk more from your hip flexors, which again reduces the effectiveness of your walk and it negates all this amazing ability to use your posterior chain of your body. That's your glutes, that's your hamstrings, and that's what's going to propel you forward and have an impact on your propulsion and your ability to increase obviously your cardiovascular fitness but specifically if you're looking to walk off weight you want to be thinking about effective energy expenditure as well so please don't do that instead do this we do need the abdominals to work but instead of thinking about pulling the belly button into the base of the spine tightly and feeling how everything becomes compressed and tense we want to be thinking about actually increasing distance from the pubic bone here to the sternum so we create length so the abdominals are contracting in a lengthened way rather than a shortened compression way so it's almost like you'll have 20 percent coming in but 80 percent coming up now the benefit of that is it will give you length and space in the lower spine so you'll actually have much more stability in the hip area it will allow you to then use the leg so you can let the leg come further back importantly opening up the hip flexors which protects the spine and also the abdominals will be stable so that as you peel off the back foot then your glutes will contract and then you'll be able to take a longer stride so your pace comes out of an effective stride because it gets a little bit longer because things happening at the back of your body okay rather than actually coming forward so don't curve everything in tight think about drawing in 20 percent and 80 percent up so we have length and strength and space that's your makeover number one. Number two, big no-no. Okay, please, when you're trying to increase your speed, do not think about increasing how fast you move your legs, okay? That will actually create a whole misalignment in your body. It will actually encourage you to be using more of your hip flexors and have an implication on the wrong and incorrect foot strike on the ground. Instead, if you want to actually increase your stride and how you actually uh, move your legs, I would encourage you to think about your arm swing. So you want the arm swing to be a nice, smooth, rhythmical arm swing. And specifically, if you focus on actually trying to get the arm coming further back, that in turn will actually allow you to open up your stride. So your stride becomes a little bit longer rather than it becoming a short snatch stride because you try to speed up your legs and then your cadence becomes restricted and less effective. So make it over with a nice, long, smooth arm swing, ideally going further back, which will actually in turn help to open up the hips and improve your tone and your propulsion going forward. Make over and big no-no number three, okay? Please do not do this. I see so many people walk with hand weights. Now, I'm not too sure whether people, you might be thinking about doing this because you're trying to get more arm tone, or maybe you're thinking that's actually going to increase more energy expenditure, but I would really encourage you not to do that, okay? And there are several reasons why. As soon as you start to add a hand weight, you are gonna to have to grip onto the weight to obviously keep hold of it. And by doing that, as soon as you start to grip with the hand, you actually create natural tension here in the shoulder girdle, which negates the ability of the shoulder girdle to have lovely rotational movement through the upper spine, which is what the shoulder should be able to do. And as we get rotational movement in the shoulder, we improve our posture, and also shoulder girdle 
capsule through to the oblique muscles which have an impact on our waistline so we can actually really walk your waist off with walk active but if you're holding on and gripping onto a tight weight we tend to create tension in the shoulder which in turn means that we can't actually uh, have this rotational quality we tend to be a bit more like a pivot joint here at the shoulder uh, rather than the elbow okay so we really want to open the area so the other factor is that studies have shown if you're really wanting to increase your cardiovascular benefit by adding weight, you're better to do it with an actual weighted vest. Um, and if you actually really want to do it with hand weights, you probably have to be having research showing about five pounds in each weight. That's a lot of weight. And then you might be thinking about having incorrect alignment through the shoulder joint, maybe the way that you sit at your desk. You're really setting yourself up for shoulder problems, back problems, and I'd really encourage you not to do that. So. If you actually want to increase the cardiovascular benefit of your body, I would ask you, encourage you to first and foremost definitely, definitely look at your technique. You can improve the quality of movement pattern and your propulsion by your technique, and that's what walk is all about. Secondly, if you really did want to increase and add some weight, I would encourage you to think about a weighted vest, okay? And thirdly, you really be wanting to think about if you want extra tone in your body, you can add a little exercise like this. So I'm gonna use a bench, I'm going to take my hands nice wide distance apart and I'm going to just take my feet out so I'm in a sort of flat position. Come up onto your toes so you're in your open ankle and from here just have a little look down at where your hands are and as you bend the elbows think about your nipple line coming down level with the bench and pressing back. Okay, So you can actually work on using your body weight in that sense and adding variation to this so you can come down, come up and then open up that body as well so you really get a lovely openness and you can do about eight of these so touch your hand touch your shoulder up and all the time with your abdominals you're thinking about distance between the pubic bone and the sternum so give that a go those are three big no-nos if you actually want to increase the cardiovascular benefit of your walking in whether you're walking off weight walking into better shape or just really making your walking effective for you walk catch is all about that making every single step you take effective so give it a go change into your makeovers leave me a comment below if you actually found this helpful and i'd love to hear how you get on from me to you take good care global greetings and enjoy your walk catch bye bye